Hello, everyone. Uh, we are halfway through our week. I hope you're enjoying this series on people we may recognize but haven't ever really thought about from Scripture. Uh, we have studied some people with really cool names this week, so let's take this opportunity to just go ahead and say them again. Monday night, we talked about Shifra and Pua, and last night, we talked about Abishag. You can find those videos if you missed them on my YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search Maggie's Music Ministry, and that's all one word. Tonight, though, we're going to talk about someone who doesn't have a name. Now, when I was planning this series, it was very important to me that everyone in the series did have a name. But Maggie, you just said the guy tonight doesn't have a name. Well, yeah, I'm getting there if you'll just give me a minute. He doesn't technically have a name, but I gave him one. And this will make more sense after we read his story. And tonight we are going to be reading the story of a man named Legion. Oh, I remember him. Who was he again? Well, let's jump right into his story and let's find out. We're going to be reading from Mark chapter 5 and we're going to find out about our pal Legion. Starting in verse 1. I lost it, but we're better now. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. He lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain, for he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart, and he broke the shackles in pieces." No one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God. Do not torment me. For Jesus was saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now, a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him, saying, Send us to the pigs, let us enter them. So Jesus gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs. And the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the sea. The herdsmen fled and told it in the city and in the country, and people came to see what it was that had happened. And they came to Jesus and saw the demon-possessed man, the one who had the legion, sitting there, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it described it to them, what had happened to the demon-possessed man and to the pigs. And they began to beg Jesus to depart from their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed with demons begged him that he might be with Jesus. And Jesus did not permit the man, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And the man went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone marveled. So, now you see where the Legion thing came from. But I'm going to take it somewhere else in a minute, so just stick around with me. There is a before and an after to this story, so I think it's safe to assume that there are two lessons to learn from our friend here. The first Legion lesson is the before lesson. Now, my pastor recently preached on this story, and he highlighted the historical fact that a Legion was actually 6,000 foot soldiers. Then, in the middle of his sermon, he just stops and he says, Can we give some credit here? This guy has survived 6,000 demons. Not only that, but he has moved out to a dead part of town, pun intended, to keep away from people that he could hurt. He ends up hurting himself. The before lesson we need to learn from Legion is this. Look me in my eyes when I say this to you. 
your demons don't own you. Okay? Your demons don't own you. Now listen, we've had several suicides happen recently to public figures, and that is terrible. But did you know that according to the World Health Organization, every year one million people commit suicide? That's a life ending every 40 seconds. Let me speak this over you again. Your demons do not own you. Now, we need to understand that our demons may not own us, but they do have significant power. But y'all, that's where my Jesus comes in, okay? Jesus saw this man and knew he could not help himself, so Jesus came for him. And Jesus is coming for you. But notice that Legion also recognized grace when it came for him. And he reached out. Wherever you are, you cannot fight your demons alone. And the first step to overcoming your demons is beginning a relationship with Jesus. He wanted to save you from your own demons so much that he came down to our earth and he died for us and rose again so he could raise us up one day to be with him. And he loves you so much. And once you have begun the demon-defeating relationship with Jesus, you need to find somebody else to talk to. So our before Legion lesson is that our demons do not own us. But what is our after Legion lesson? And how can you say that he's still Legion after the Legion is gone? Well, let's look back at verse 19 of chapter 5 in the book of Mark. 19, 19, 19, 19, comes right before 20. And he did not permit, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. Tell them how much the Lord has done for you. Are you ready for the after lesson? Jesus doesn't just defeat our demons he replaces them with blessings. A legion's worth of blessings. In Malachi 3.10, God says, See if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. That is a truth from this book, y'all, and it is our truth. Jesus wants to come into our lives remove our demons that we have been fighting alone for so long and fill their place with blessings until we couldn't possibly ask or handle anything more. I am trying to write these devotions a week in advance. So far, that hasn't worked well for me. So today I ended up writing most of this one. But it was kind of a blessing in disguise because I get to say something spectacular to you right now. A legion of demons was defeated in our world today. With the new approach to how families are treated at the border of our country, the demons of fear and of judgment and hatred and separation and so many other demons I can't even name, they were thrown into the sea and they were drowned today. I know this is something people were upset about because I was upset about it. And I know this is something people prayed about. And Jesus saw and he heard his people and he came for us. And I would just encourage you tonight to be sure and praise God for that, for hearing us and for answering us. Because he always, always comes for his people, just like he came for Legion and turned him in to a legion of blessings from a man who was cursed with a legion of evil spirits. And that's why I believe it's safe for us to just call this guy Legion. And why I think it's probably not okay for us to ever again hear his name and say. Now, who was he again? Let us pray. Father God, we are so thankful for this day that you have given us just in general as a day. But God, we are also grateful for this day in history. The fact that your people used their voice, Lord, 
and that we threw a legion of demons with your help into the sea. God, you are so amazing and powerful and full of grace and mercy for us. But God, we would also ask for your forgiveness tonight because we know that our country is not the only country with a problem of people seeking refuge. All around the world, there are people running for their lives. And it wasn't until it happened in our own country that we started to care about it. But God, I pray that you would keep that passion for displaced people, for refugees, God. Keep that passion in our hearts alive. Today is World Refugee Day. What an amazing day for such a groundbreaking thing to happen. But God, keep that alive in us. Keep us pursuing justice for the widow, for the orphan, for the people who have no home, for all the people that you reached out to when you walked among us. I pray that you would bless everyone under the sound of my voice and be with them and help them grow in compassion and in mercy for the people around them. And we pray all these things in the name of the God who sees not only us, but everybody on this planet. We pray these things in the name of the God named Elroy, the God who sees. We pray these things in your name, God. Amen.